Hi, my name's Aaron Jones, uh, Coach Development Manager for Petunia Rugby Football Club. I'm down here at Hutbilly High School uh, working with the First 15 today um, with emphasis on um, attack shape and communication. Uh, what we're going to look to do in today's session is break down um, the attack shape and look at the components across the park um, and really emphasise the importance of the communication and emphasise the importance of our decision making. Um, so what we'll do is we'll start with uh, just some unopposed stuff, just focusing on the detail around it and then we'll look to, to build it up and, and place that emphasis on communication and making decisions against uh, a, a live defence. How we going boys, all good? Yeah. yeah, good, good to see us here. Hey lads, what we're going to focus on today is we're going to be looking at our attack shape, okay, and um, we'll just have a look at what our attack shape looks like, um, what, it, what our formation is and, and who's in what position, how we get to that attack shape and then what we'll look to do is we'll look to break it down and just isolate a few key areas um, to get us making effective decisions. So first thing from a set piece perspective, what's the first thing we need to be clear on going from scrum and line out? Calls. Calls? Positions. Yep, positions, okay so we're going to move into looking at our attack shape as a whole. All right, and we're gonna, I'll just give you some, some cues on if we're gonna go line out, if we're gonna go scrum. Get those clear calls in, and then we're just gonna play into position. I'm just gonna have a look where we find ourselves and how to be effective in those positions, yeah? Okay, and get some real role clarity. I think it's really important that we have the ability as coaches to isolate particular areas in our attack shape. It's very easy for us to look at the big picture, but we've really got to identify the small components and work out how to make effective decisions without having too much going on around us. We've just had a look at their attack pattern as a whole and just sat back and had a look as to what clarity and what understanding they have and how they're trying to operate. Um, from there, it enables myself in conjunction with the boys just to question and dig a little bit deeper as to why they run that attack pattern and how we can fine tune a few things to be effective. Other ways that we can look at developing some of that clarity is by using a whiteboard and just working some positions so they can have a visual as to what it looks like or even using blocks on a, a simulated field as well um, and that's a good way to start the session get some clarity and then move into what it looks like out on the grass um, and then moving forward into the next session we'll really break down and isolate those key areas around our attack and look to um, really challenge them to making effective decisions which will enhance our attack pattern even more. Tell me what was our shape that we were trying to play there, boys? One, three, three, one. Yeah, one, three, three, one. Okay, so first thing, when we've got a set piece, all right, what's the first thing that's really important? To win it. Yeah, we've got to win our set piece, good boy, because if we don't win our set piece, our attack shape is a waste of time. So we've got to win our set piece, okay, and we back ourselves to win that. And our communication, what are we communicating? What we're doing. What we're doing, okay. So from a forwards perspective, how many of us knew where we were looking to go on the, on the field? Did we have clarity around that? Yeah. Yep. That's what Rich was telling us. Okay. So we had some clarity around where we were going. So from a line out over here, how do we get into a 1 3 3 1 shape? So we've won our ball, we've hit our 10. What's our ball carrier doing? He needs to know where he's going, okay? So we're going to focus on just setting a really close target to begin with, okay? So we'll set a target around that, that 10 12 channel. Who from the line out is going to go to that first phase? Flankers. Flankers, okay. What's the rest of the group doing? Setting up, getting into position for the next phase. Yep, and where does that next phase come from? Where's it, where's it going to be? Uh, off the ruck. Off the ruck. On the left or on the right? If we're having a right side line out, yeah. are we going to come right of the ruck or left? Uh, left. Left, good man, okay. So, real simple, we're just going to go through this a couple of times to get some real clarity of our shape. Okay, and then we're going to come over here and just isolate it a little bit. So what we'd like to see from our line out, we're going to hit that close target. Okay, clean that ruck, get a group around the corner, and they'll look to carry. Okay, and then where are we going to go from there? Another pod. And where would that pod be? To the right, because we've sucked in defenders. All right, so we'll have a look at that. We'll hit that close target, get a pod around the corner. Who are our players on our edges? Who's going to stay on this edge? Our hooker. Our hooker? Okay, who's going to go to this one? Eight. Our eight? Okay, so we'll have a look at that and we'll see if we can get some real clear definition around that one three three one shape and we filter our backs into that and then we can make some adjustments. Happy?
boy, so okay, some good stuff there. A couple of things that I'm seeing is it's really important before we know what to communicate, we've got to have clarity around what we're trying to communicate. Okay, so we're going to come back to a line out over here. What's a real simple target for us to set? Uh, probably the middle. Probably the middle, okay. And who would that be? Second five. Orlo, okay. So Orlo's going to run off, off Rick. Yep, we'll set that target in the middle. Who's going to hit that ruck? Flankers. Flankers. Flankers, yep. Okay, so, and sometimes that picture may change because we're lifting at the tail of the line out, but those guys aren't, aren't doing anything at the tail, so we're going to hit that ruck. What do we want to happen next? Uh, set uh, a pod, pod rush out to the side. Yep, so pod, when we say out to the side, are we going left or are we going right? Out left, left, and then we can push back right. Cool, okay, so we've set that target. We've got that pod coming around the corner left, okay? We're really clear on who our lead runner is and who our options are. Carry that ball in there. Then what options do we have from that? If they're out wide, set enough, then we can go back to our pod. Good, okay. Right. So we're starting to look up. We've got players in positions and we're starting to make decisions, okay? So we've pulled the defence in. We can go to that edge. If the defence is there, then like Rick says, we just we carry back to that pod there Okay, and manipulate the defence and we should play and by then we should have a clear 1-3-3-1 one, three, three, one shape, yeah? yeah? Okay, so we'll go to a line out over here, right, we'll have a look at that, eh? Good. Who's around that corner, boys? What is the purpose of our one three three one, or what is one three three one? Just to have more players sit out, so we don't have everyone running around. Yep. Okay. So with that answer in mind, what did we do in here when the ball went to the edge? Those that got up off the ground. We ran out and cleaned that ruck, didn't we? So, what should have we have done in here? Reset. Reset. Okay, because our backs and our eight that's on that edge. You, would it be fair to say that three or four players is enough to win a ruck? Yeah. Yep. Okay. What's going to help us have some direction around there? Comms. Comms from first five. Good. Okay. What sort of communication? Just comms up from me, the number 10. So basically just directing most of them around and giving them some good feedback, like just telling them where to be. Yeah, and direct them, okay? So giving them some solution-based information so that they know where to stand and they can make their decisions. The other thing that's really gonna help you with that is keeping your head on a swivel, yeah? yeah? Okay, so constantly looking, scanning, seeing where players are, if they're too wide, getting them closer. Yeah. Okay, so if we can set this ruck in here with this pod, okay? What's gonna happen, boys? These guys are on the ground. And if we get quick ball on the edge, what are we probably going to want to do? Go support. Yeah, go and support and be in a carry option there. And Rich will organise you from there, yeah? Where do you guys go, do you think, when we're talking 1-3-3-1? Three, three, one? They've gone round the corner. Oh, then we'll set up out here or just wherever there's space in the midfield. Good boy. Nice. Okay, so let's have a look at that, eh? Okay, so we'll play that from that ruck for me. Yeah, five. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Okay. Push them up, push them up, I'll organise them. With our pods, okay, do you think we need to be standing on each other's toes? So what do you think I mean by standing on each other's toes? Bunched up. Bunched up too close, yeah. Okay, so we can get a little bit wider because we have the ability to catch and pass and that's going to stress the defence just a little bit more. Okay? So, boys, some better shape there. Why do we think, or what do we think was better about that shape that we were running then? I think a more comms were. Yep. 
And who were the comms coming from? First five. First five, eh? So it's really important as a first five that we get our eyes up, okay, and we communicate the pictures that we're seeing early. Yeah, up and go, up and go. It's really important, obviously, from a directive yeah, perspective. Fire, fire, players, fire. especially at younger ages, they're still learning the game. They yeah, have yeah. Oh, a oh, game oh, driver, oh, like a first five or a halfback, that has game understanding and communicates effectively. It allows players to understand what's going on around them. I think that was a really good example there with Rick talking to his players early, so they have the ability to get in position and, and, and be effective. And I think it's something that we really need to work on as coaches to empower our tens, make sure they have clarity around what we're trying to achieve on the field in attack and in defence, and empower them to, to communicate to their players so that we are getting the best out of our players and the best out of our attack as well. No point when the ball's at the back trying to organise people, we need to trust that we'll win that ball and we need to organise sort of a phase ahead or organise on the move. Okay, so I felt that our communication from our 10 was a lot earlier which enabled our pod, okay, to get in position earlier or get a little bit wider. Yeah. How do we feel about our pod formation compared to how we started? It's a lot better. What's better about it? Just more spreading clarity. Out. More clarity? Spreading out. Spreading out. And by spreading out, what does it give us? Options. Options. Okay, we saw some really nice options with using the backdoor release option, with using our tips and things like that as well. You can see now we're starting to get some real clarity in what our roles are and what our positions look like within that shape. Okay, so what that allows us to do now is we, in the next session, what we'll look to do is break that down and isolate what our edge attack looks like and making good decisions on that edge what our three pod looks like and how we can make effective decisions and we can just emphasise a little bit more around where we stand and, and so forth as well. Okay, so again we've got some real clarity as to where we should be in a one three three one. Okay, what what is the purpose of it and what it looks like. Now it's about fine-tuning some of the detail within and we'll look at developing that within that next session. So coaches, what we've just done within that session is we've just had a look at their attack pattern as a whole and just sat back and had a look as to what clarity and what understanding they have and how they're trying to operate. From there, it enables myself in conjunction with the boys just to question and dig a little bit deeper as to why they run that attack pattern and how we can fine tune a few things um, to be effective. Other ways that we can look at developing some of that clarity is by using a whiteboard um, and just working some positions so they can have a visual as to what it looks like or even using blocks um, on a, a simulated field as well um, and that's a good way to start the session get some clarity and then move into what it looks like out on the grass and then moving forward into the next session we'll really break down and isolate those key areas around our attack and look to um, really challenge them to making effective decisions which will enhance our attack pattern even more. That's right. Okay boys, last time uh, we were together we looked at our three pod formation and what that attack formation looks like, the detail around our alignment, our communication and what we can execute from that through our options. This week what we're going to have a look at is we're going to have a look at our edge attack but we're also going to incorporate some of that pod formation as well. So we're going to go unopposed to begin with just to get familiar and it's really important that we um, probably slot into our positions for this, so just remind me who would be on our edge from a forwards perspective? Two and eight, good, okay, and then we'll incorporate our winger and potentially a centre in there with our ten as well, okay, and then we'll look at our pod formation and what options we use from that, okay. What do we think this might simulate? What's happened over here? Uh, yeah, our breakdown, our three pods carried into that breakdown, okay, and then we've got our edge attack here, so if we can move that ball to the edge, let it go, let it go, let it go, okay, we set that ruck there, what options do we then have from this, nice, so we've got a pod off 10, and we can carry through, or we can use that pod off 9, what might your role be amongst that pod there? I'm stand behind him. Where you go, brother. Go and stand in there. Yep. We'll repeat that attack shape there for me. So away we go. Use your options. Good. Clean that ruck. Reload and work, boys. Reload and work. So all we're doing is we're just isolating half of our attack pattern. Okay. And it will be no different on that edge, but we just want to get us 
reloading and working into position so we can be effective and utilizing our options of our tips and insides and plays out the back. Just with our pod that's aligning themselves off, if I'm rich, or actually get rich at, where are you brother, jump in here mate for me. How do we get our depth off him from a forward perspective? Where, where do we, how do we know where to stand? Back of his shirt. Can we see the back of his shirt? The other thing I can do is I can use his heel as my, for me as a lead runner, I can use the heel of his foot to position myself here, and then once he leaves, I can get my timing from it, or I can take a step. I don't want to be too deep, because the deeper I am, the further it is for me to run and get to that gain line, yeah? We want to be engaging the defence and making some decisions. So we'll have a look at that again. Same three pod. Rich, yep. what do we want from you? Comms and positioning. Comms and positioning and nice loud comms, yeah? Yep. Work rate off the ball, position ourselves effectively. Away we go. Come here. Good boys. Go ahead. Nice. Well done. Nice release option. Loving how we've got nice square hips down this edge. And we're reloading nice and quick. We'll just pull back a little bit. Just want you boys to give a little bit of defence. So they're making some decisions with bodies in front. That's it, good space, nice. Reload early, come on, you gotta work boys, you gotta work. Get to him boys, you gotta get to him. Okay, we'll go to that pot again. What are some pictures that we're seeing at the moment? A little bit stack. Okay, so how are we going to fix that? A little bit of depth. Okay, hold our feet, run onto it with a bit of a vengeance. Where do we want to be looking? Yeah, we've got to look at the defence. If we don't look at the defence, we can't make decisions. Trust that the ball will be won and looked after. We're reloading and we're scanning head on a swivel. And I can tell my man if he's not in a good position, where he needs to be, okay, and then we can attack space. Okay, so let's get vision up the field. That's it, get through, get through, get through. Good line. Onside. Nice, Nate. Okay, we can fine tune a little bit of our line running, but that's okay. We start to call and make some good decisions. What do we want from these guys that are attacking down these channels? Straightening up, Straightening up nice square hips, fixing defenders and border space, good. When we're reloading, what do we want? One lead runner, short runner on the inside, tip option outside, good, okay. Make sure we're onside, boys. There's our hole, there it is. Good man, got to get to him boys. Okay, just hold there. I know it's a little bit wet. Are we stressing the defence by being in here? Nah. Okay, show me where you might move to. That's alright, that's okay, we can still... alter has got a good pass off him. So what do you want to do? You want to catch from here? Yeah. Carry? You're getting the comms from the man in the back, aren't you? Yeah. Okay, so in that position, you can have a look over your shoulder now, see where he is. There he is there. Ball comes, we carry and we release. Carry, release, there it is. So just a couple of little details within. What's happening with our pod at times? We're getting too what? Too close. Bunch. Too bunch, too close, yeah? Yep. Now we want to be comfortable distributing and we need to be able to distribute to that person. So we don't want to be too far away, but we want to be stressing the defence as well. If we just stay really close, it makes it really easy to defend. Because they can probably defend one or two and not really get stressed if we tip. Okay, so I want us to work on getting a little bit wider. 
What did we try to do on that last one to the edge? Where did we try to get to really quickly? Right. Yep, and it looked like we tried to execute a miss pass, yeah? It's cool, that's a simple way in which we can get the ball to the edge quickly, but our alignment needs to be bang on, yeah? Okay, so it could be that we promote that outside centre and push that ball across, then we get the ball in their hands early and then we're playing. Okay, so two things we want to focus on here from our pod is what? That width, that spread, and when we're looking to get to the edge quickly, what do we want? Alignment. Alignment, yeah. Okay, cool. Good, well done, now we're on that edge, good. Sit there. Clean them. Bit of a bullet there boys, but that's okay. So just one little observation. What we're doing is we're reloading right into here. Okay, and we don't, we don't need to reload here because that means he's just giving me the ball here. Okay, so ideally, we reload into this space, so reload into this space for me. Pull in, eyes up, eyes up the field. Okay. Rich, can you hit the lead runner? Any issues with him getting that width off the pass? Yeah, okay, so we have gotta trust him. Trust that he can move that ball away because that's gonna give us more space between defenders. That's gonna stress them more. If we stand on each other's toes, we're not gonna challenge the defense. Okay, but we're starting to utilize the options. We're starting to reload. We saw some good use of space on that on that edge to, to find a break up that touchline too. Okay coaches, so over the past few sessions what we've looked to do is get some real clarity around what our one three three one looks like. We have done a little bit of block work just to get clarity within our players and then we've isolated what our pod formation through the midfield looks like and we've incorporated now our edge attack. Now we have just been using one half of the field and just reloading and working, but that's to get players familiar with what we're trying to do on the edge and what we're trying to do through our pod formation. And by reducing the numbers just to half a field and bringing some guys in as defense, it puts players under pressure and it enables them to make decisions with bodies in front. Uh, Aaron Jones here again down at the uh, Patani Rugby Football Club been working over the past month on the 1331 attack shape. We've broken it down and really looked at the nuts and bolts of the attack shape and what we're going to do today is put it all together and just see how far the boys have come with the detail that we've been providing to them. Uh, we had a really good question from Chris in the States um, and he asked the question why? Why is it that we run 1331? I guess it's really important that we understand the why. It um, doesn't matter whether we're running a 1331 or a 242 or a 332. It's got to be um, in relation to the profile of our players. So by using a 1331, it allows us to have four areas across the field where we've got designated forwards that are a real threat to the opposition. So, you know, we've got some good elusive. Um, explosive ball carriers on the edges and we've got some big strong ball runners up through the middle and the 1331 allows us to play off 9, play off 10, utilize our skill set in our backs um, when we see the space to to release and play to the width and um, it's, a, it's just a real simple way of conserving some of the big boys energy up through the middle as well because they're just having to carry, reload and just get in effective positions. So just looking at line out off the top here, close runner, nice and close to our forwards and a, a nice definitive lead runner off our pod, good formation from our pod here. What we're looking for is uh, solution based information, so carry, tip etc which is really clear and we're probably a little bit deep as a 10 there so we'd probably look to push our 10 up a little bit flatter just to be a real threat at the line. Already after that first phase ruck we've got our hooker out on the edge there. Um, we're just really wanting to be looking at our inside support players, just reacting a little bit quicker so that we can um, make sure that we're getting there and clearing effectively. Just here again, if we have a look at our 10 
just quite deep in the pocket so we can challenge our 10 just to get a little bit wider off that ruck and bring that pod formation which is nicely aligned um, but if we can get them a little bit flatter but less room to get to game line and can really be fizzing onto that ball and challenging the opposition and stressing them. Already we see that our other pod is organised outside of that carrying pod now. So again, we've got a good formation. Um, we'd like them just to get a little bit flatter. So that's the role of the person in behind, um, our 12 or our 10, just to be pushing those boys up and anticipating where that ruck is going to be. And then what we can look to do is call whether we're wanting that carry or we're wanting that release based on what we see the defence doing. We're organising ourselves back down that short side as well. So if we just hold that there, we can see that we've got an attacking line on the blind side. If the defence over chases due to our pod formation getting ready to carry. And again, if we, we were to push that pod formation up and get them a little bit flatter, um, that would probably stress the defence and have them chasing around the corner. And the option could potentially be for us to go back down that blind side using our three backs there and our hooker that's reloaded to the edge quite nicely. So again, we're looking to get the ball to the edge there. Our pod's probably over chased just a little bit and as you can see, our 10 is quite deep in the pocket. So again, if we can just get them, uh, we can trust the pass of our nine and get our 10 just a little bit wider, a little bit flatter and that nice pod formation that we see, if we can bring them up just a little bit as well and we can really be effective challenging the defense at the line and using our tips um, and inside passes as well. Pod formation there, nicely organised, probably a better position from our 10 as well. And we have our release option out the back, which we can utilise if we're fixing the defence. And you see we go out the back there and we can utilise the players and the width to go to that far edge. So what we've done here is we've identified that we want our hooker on that right edge. So as you can see in the back, he's throwing the ball and he's shot across to the far side to position himself out on that edge. Again, for coaches, you'll have different people that you may want on those edges. So you may opt for your hooker to throw or to scrummage on that left side and then reload and stay there. Um, but for the purpose of this activity in our shape, we're wanting our hooker on that right edge. We've set that midfield target there. We're probably a little bit flat from our support roles, but you can see they've held their feet quite nicely there, um, which enables us to still use those options if we want to. And they've had the comms there to carry the ball and just set that ruck. Again, good formation. We haven't had the, um, the designated person in the boot. We've gone a little bit wider there, so we've just adapted, and we've gone out the back to play to the edge straight away after setting that target. So another variation that you can use. It's just about training and having clarity with those players. Are we going one phase round the corner? Are we going straight to width? Or are we looking to go two phases round the corner and then look to go to width there? but it's all about using the full width of the field and those four threats that we have from a 1-3-3-1 structure. So again, off the top line out ball, we're fed off our 10, and just when we bring our pod formation, we're looking for real clear comms, and this is where the detail comes into it. You, know, you can see our support players, from their body language, you can see they haven't really given them uh, information that allows them to make effective decisions, and they're probably a little bit distant around their support lines as well. So we can rewind that back, and we can really focus on making sure that they're telling them to carry or tip, and making sure that they're you know right on that ball carrier's back to support them because the game's so quick these days and people are on the ball straight away so we want to make sure that our support players there are nice and quick and effective. Okay so over the past month what you've seen with the boys here is we've got a really good base, a really good foundation now. The boys have a real understanding around what we're trying to achieve and they've really got an understanding of, of the formation and how it looks. And moving forward through the coming months, what it'll allow us to do is really focus on that generic skill set that is required in order for them to play the style. And we can just continue to work on their decision making ability, which is really going to enhance this attack pattern for this uh, group of boys. I think the other thing to remember as well is because we do have you know, forwards um, out in the width and backs having to clean rucks as well, it's really important that we challenge the skill set of our players um, and don't necessarily just focus on the big boys cleaning the rucks and, and the, uh, the backs 
you know, making the breaks and, and doing all the fancy stuff. I challenge coaches to, to put players in, in uncomfortable positions, really focus on a, a well-developed generic skill set, so the ability to run, catch, pass effectively with square hips, carry strong and effective with the ball, and really focus on being effective and maintaining good body height on those clean-outs as well.